In an old abbey town, a long, long while ago, there officiated as grave digger in the churchyard one Gabriel Grubb, an ill-conditioned, cross-grained, surly fellow, a morose and lonely man who consorted with nobody but himself in an old liquor bottle which fitted deep into his waistcoat pocket, and who eyed each merry face as it passed him by with such a deep scowl of malice and ill-humor as it was difficult to meet without feeling something the worse for. A little before twilight, one Christmas Eve, Gabriel shouldered his spade, lighted his lantern, and betook himself toward the churchyard. For he had got a grave to finish by morning, and feeling very low, he thought it might raise his spirits, perhaps, if he went on with his work at once. As he went his way up the ancient street, he saw the cheerful lights from the blazing fires gleam through the old casements. He heard the loud laughs and the cheerful shouts of those who were assembled around them. He marked the bustling preparations for the next day's cheer, and smelt the numerous savory odors as they steamed up from the kitchen windows in clouds. All this was gall and wormwood to the heart of Gabriel Grubb. And when groups of children bounded out of their houses, Gabriel smiled grimly and clutched the handle of his spade with a firmer grasp as he thought of measles, scarlet fever, whooping cough, and a good many other sources of consolation besides. In this happy frame of mind, Gabriel strode along, returning a short, sullen growl to the good-humoured greetings of such of his neighbours as now and then passed him, until he turned into the dark lane that led to the churchyard. Now, Gabriel Grubb had been looking forward to reaching this dark lane, for it was, generally speaking, a nice, moody, mournful place, into which the townspeople did not much care to go except in broad daylight. And when the sun was shining. Consequently, he was not a little indignant upon hearing a young urchin roaring out some jolly song about a merry Christmas in this very sanctuary, which had been called Coffin Lane, ever since the days of the old abbey and the time of the shaven-headed monks. As Gabriel walked on and the voice drew nearer, he found it proceeded from a small boy who was hurrying along to reach one of the little parties in the street, and who, partly to keep himself company and partly to prepare himself for the occasion, was shouting out the song to the highest pitch of his voice. So Gabriel waited until the boy came up, and then dodged him into the corner and rapped him over the head with his lantern five or six times to teach him to modulate his voice. And as the boy hurried away, holding his hands to his head and singing quite a different sort of tune, Gabriel chuckled heartily to himself and entered the churchyard, locking the gate behind him. He took off his coat, set down his lantern, and getting into the unfinished grave, worked at it for an hour or so with right good will. But the earth was hardened with the frost, and it was no easy matter to brick it up and shovel it out, and although there was a moon, it was a very young one, and shed little light upon the grave, which was in the shadow of the church. At any other time, these obstacles would have made Gabriel Grubb feel very moody and miserable, but he was so well pleased with having stopped the small boys singing that he looked down into the grave when he had finished his work for the night with grim satisfaction, murmuring as he gathered up his things. Brave lodgings for one, brave lodgings for one, a few feet of cold earth when life is done, a stone at the head, a stone at the feet, a right to see meal for the worms to eat, rank grass overhead, damp clay around, brave lodgings for one, these and holy ground. Ha <laughs> ha laughed Gabriel Grubb, who sat himself down by an upright tombstone, which was a favorite resting place of his, and, and drew forth his liquor bottle. <laughs> a coffin at Christmas, a Christmas box. Ha 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 repeated a voice which sounded close 
behind him. Gabriel paused in the act of lifting the liquor bottle to his lips and looked around. The bottom of the oldest grave around him was not more still and quiet in the pale moonlight. The cold hoarfrost glistened on the tombstones and sparkled like rows of gems on the stone carvings of the church. The snow lay hard and crisp upon the ground and spread over the thickly strewn mounds of earth, so white and smooth a covering that it seemed as if corpses lay there. Not the faintest rustle broke the profound tranquility of the solemn scene. All was so cold and still. Hmm. It was the echoes, said Gabriel Grubb, lifting the liquor bottle to his lips again. It was not, said a deep voice. Gabriel started up and stood rooted to the spot with astonishment and terror. 